Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be discussing uh, thyroid conversion and what you need to know when you're switching from level thyroxine to natural desiccated thyroid or MDT to T3 or T3 to level thyroxine. No matter what you're doing, I want to kind of give you some information on how that should be accomplished. Okay, and the reason I'm even spending time going over this is because I think the chart that I've created here is certainly more accurate than the chart that most doctors are using, which is down here, and we're going to talk about both of them. Okay, so first, so don't worry, I'm going to come back to this, but I, I want to go up to the chart that I've created here and explain to you why I think this one is a little more accurate, accurate and a little more important. So one of the downfalls that I see of many doctors and patients um, occurs when they go and find a new doctor who's willing to prescribe them natural desiccated thyroid, armor thyroid, nature thyroid, et cetera, one of those medications. So the story goes something like this. They've been on levothyroxine for years, maybe even decades. They've never really felt that great on the medicine. They read a lot of information online, so they're thinking to themselves, I, I know what I need if I can just be switched to natural desiccated thyroid something with T3, all of my problems will be solved, right? Does that sound a little bit familiar to many of you? Um, and I see that a lot. So what will happen is, let's say they go, they're on 100 micrograms or 150 micrograms. Well, let's just use 100 for this example. So let's say they're on 100 micrograms of level thyroxine. So they go to their, their primary care who doesn't have a lot of experience in, experience in prescribing natural desiccated thyroid. So he, he thinks, okay, well, um, 100 micrograms is probably about one grain right? So he gives the person, the patient, which is you, one grain of, of WP thyroid, nature thyroid, armor thyroid, whatever it is, and you feel worse, okay? You check your labs a month, six weeks later, because you're like, well, if I just stick on it, it's going to get better. You check your labs, and guess what? Your TSH goes up, and you're like, and see, so your doctor says, see, I told you, uh, this medication isn't as consistent as level thyroxine, so they, they use that as an excuse to put you back on your, your old medication, a level or T4 only medication. So, and, and here's the big problem, okay? So if you, if you look at this, this is 100 micrograms. And on my chart, I'm saying it's, it's the equivalent to two grains, okay? But if you come down here, you can see one grain um, of the natural desiccated thyroid is equivalent, in their opinion, to 100 micrograms of T4. So they're using this chart when they give you that medication. They're saying, okay, you're right here, 100 of the T4, you know, synthetic, level thyroxine, et cetera. So just come down here to 100 and then go right across to the desiccated portion, which is one grain, um, desiccated thyroid. So, but if you look up here, I'm telling you 100 microgram is more closely related to two grains. So really what they're doing is they're switching your medication and they're underdosing you. Okay, so remember that one grain of natural desiccated thyroid only has about 38 micrograms of T4 in it and about 9 micrograms of T3 in it. So you've gone from 100 micrograms of T4 to 38 plus 9 of, of the T3, and then you're, you know, you're wondering why you feel like crap. So a better option would be to say, okay, well, let's, let's use this conversion and let's just think about it and say 100 micrograms is more closely related to 2 grains, which is 2 times 38 uh, equivalents of T4 and then 9 times 2 which is 18 of the T3. Okay, so that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see uh, both patients and doctors making when they when they switch medications. So I want to provide this chart. So in my opinion, 50 micrograms of T4 is more is is about equivalent to 1 grain. 100 micrograms of T4 is equivalent to 2 grains, 150 to 3 grains and 200 to 4 grains, okay? And then on the other side, now most 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 doctors may switch you from T4 to NDT, but most will not or are certainly not comfortable switching you to T3 only. However, if you do have a provider who's willing to add some T3, I want you to use these conversions, this conversion over here as well. So in my opinion, based off clinical experience, um, treating you know hundreds of patients at this point, I, would, I believe that T3 is about twice as strong as T4. Now, the in inconsistency comes when we compare the effect of T3 versus TSH on, on, or versus T4 on TSH suppression. Okay, so when you look at the studies, T3 is about 3.3 or 3.4 times more potent at suppressing the TSH than T4 is. So most doctors will say, okay, well then T3 is about four times um, as strong as 
T4, and that's where they kind of mess up the conversion. But in reality, it's about twice as strong. So if you're on 50 micrograms of T4 and you are switching to T3 only, I'd recommend the 25 micrograms. If you're on 100, cut it in half to 50 of T3. If you're on 150, cut it in half to 75, 200 to 100 micrograms. Now, rarely do I get people up to 100 micrograms, but I certainly have some patients. They usually have other issues, and we're not going to get in that, into that today, but they have a high cellular demand for T3. Um, what I prefer to do in a lot of patients is do a combination of natural desiccated thyroid plus T3, as pr assuming that they can tolerate that. Okay, But I, I want to show you this specifically and, and how to use this conversion chart. So don't fall for that whole, th this, that whole uh, the shenanigans where your doctor says, oh, you're on 100 micrograms, let's give you one grain. No, that's not going to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to feel worse because it's just simply not accurate in terms of conversion. So that's a big deal. He's basically dosing you in half. So I also want to spend a couple minutes here talking about when switching from T4 to NDT, how to make this transition successful, because a lot of patients also mess this up, and then talk a little bit about the average dosages that I see um, in, in my patient population, okay, and patients that come in to see me, because what you're probably going to be doing is you're going to be thinking, well, okay, I, you know, I heard so-and-so, I have some friends, or I'm on a Facebook group or whatever, and they're on 200 micrograms of, of T4, and I'm on 100, so I need more, or something like that. You know, so-and-so is on four grains, and I'm on one and a half, so what's, what's the deal there? Um, and so we'll, we'll, I'll explain that in a second here as well. So to start with, when you are switching from T4 to NDT, the, the biggest thing you want to make sure you do, or, and one of the most important things, is take that transition slowly, okay? And the reason for that is, if you've been on T4 medication for, you know, the longer you've been on it, years to even decades, your cellular receptors are not used to high amounts of T3. So if I suddenly supply your body with T3 from natural desiccated thyroid or just from T3 medication by itself, those receptors are ultra sensitive and they uptake that T3 very rapidly. And the tissues that seem to be the most sensitive to that T3 um, are the receptors in your heart. Okay, and so they, they utilize thyroid hormone a little differently, or T3 especially, than the other cells in your body. And they tend to be very sensitive to it um, when they're introduced to it if they haven't been in a long time. So when that happens, patients may experience palpitations, fluttery sensations, um, jitteriness, they may also experience some anxiety. Um, they actually might get tachycardic, which means their heart rate actually increases. That usually doesn't happen. Normally what will happen is the patient will just feel the fluttering sensation, but if they check their pulse, it's not actually a rapid pulse. Okay? Um, but to prevent those symptoms from happening, I recommend starting out quite slowly, um, and usually about 15 milligrams or a quarter of a grain. 15 is if you're using Armor, if you're using Nature Thyroid WP Thyroid. Um, or one of those other ones that's not armor, it's 16.25 milligrams. So just I would say just go based off of a quarter of a grain. And I, I usually have patients do a self-titration um, by increasing their dose every 10 to 14 days, depending on the sensitivity of the patient. Okay, Some patients can, can you know, go up really quickly, and some patients even need to go slower than that. So this, this is just an average. Don't live and die by this information. Okay, But this is what I've seen. Um, uh, in my practice, and I've treated a lot of people um, who, who I've transitioned from T4 to NDT. Um, and by doing this, it will help reduce those symptoms that I just mentioned before, getting too overstimulated, and then maybe even scaring you a little bit from using that medication further. So if you do it the right way, um, there's, there's less side effects, and you'll, you'll do better in the long run, okay? Yes, if you notice this, you are going to be slightly um, hypothyroid in the beginning as you transition. So the bigger the dose, Let's say you're on 150 micrograms and I'm starting you out on a quarter of a grain. Okay, that's like one twelfth of the dose you're going to need, but it's a better way to do it. Okay, and like I said, if you tolerate the titration, hopefully your doctor will give you um, that uh, leeway to kind of do a little bit on your own to get up to like a one two grain, and then you can you can stop by and reevaluate the physician at that point. That's kind of the way that I do it in my practice. Um, okay, so let's talk about the average dosages that I see patients on in uh, my office. So on level thyroxin, so first of all, before I even get into these, you've got to realize that the dosage that you're going to be on varies tremendously from person to person. All right, there's a, there's a very unique demand at the cellular level for thyroid hormone, and it varies not only by person, it varies by time of the day, it varies by social, social stressors and trauma, et cetera, anything else that your body goes under, you know, you might have an increased demand. You might need 100 micrograms one day and 75 the next. You might need 100 in the morning, 150 in the afternoon. These things vary tremendously, okay? But 
I want to give you some average dosing here. All right, so level thyroxine, I would say the majority of the patients fall somewhere between 25 micrograms per day to 200 micrograms per day. Yes, I've seen someone four or five, even 600 micrograms. Those are unusual, and I've seen people even on lower, you know, less than 25 that's been compounded. But I have to say the majority of patients usually fall between 75 and 150, okay, per day if they're on T4 only. For natural desiccated thyroid, um, I have patients on anywhere from a quarter of a grain, which is 15 milligrams I'm putting here, to 195 milligrams, which would be the equivalent of about three grains. I kind of I kind of goofed here on these numbers. That should have been 16.25 to 195, so forgive that. Um, but, but basically what I'm trying to say is one quarter of a grain all the way up to about three grains. Uh, and I would say the, in this situation, the majority of, of my patients um, fall between the two and three grain range. Now, you also have to remember that I, I usually add pure T3 onto their NDT to begin with. So, you know, some people come into me with on four or five grains because they needed that extra T3, but really what they needed was the T3 without the T4. So it's, it's often better to reduce by a grain or two and increase by the T3. So, but that's just something that I found in my personal practice. That if you, if you found a doctor that's willing to provide an NDT, realize you may need to go higher than this if he's not willing to also prescribe T3, okay? But probably around the two to three grain, grain mark in my practice. And then on T3, I have about, oh, I'd say one third or so of my patients on T3, T3 only. Um, and that changes um, based off of their medical conditions. But I would say it ranges anywhere from five micrograms the lower end, if you're if you come in on T4 only medication, and then you can add you know five to twenty. That's kind of a well, more like five to ten if you're a conventional um, physician here. But um, five micrograms by itself is a pretty low dose if you're not on anything else. But ranging from five micrograms all the way up to 100 micrograms per day. 100 definitely being on the higher side. Um, the patients who would need the 100 micrograms are people with fibromyalgia, um, treatment resistant uh, bipolar disease chronic Lyme disease, those type of patients who have a very, um, high, very high amount of inflammation in the body, very low conversion rates, people have been sick for a really, really, really long time, I'm talking two, three, four decades, those are the patients that really need these higher doses of T3. And I would say most patients that I treat fall between somewhere between the 25 and 50 microgram um, dosing range here. Not, and again, it's, it's, it's highly variable. And I will usually add 25 to 50 mics in addition to this two to three grains or so, depending on the person. But um, anyway, I, wanna, I wanted to go over this with you guys because I think it's very important. And it's something that, that physicians and patients mess up quite a bit when they're, when they're transferring over medications. And the reason this happens is because they're just, most doctors aren't comfortable switching from level of thyroxine to NDT. Even though they may be willing, they just don't have that information. So I, I recommend using this as kind of some guidelines here. Just realize they're not perfect, but I think they're more accurate. Then this chart here, which is what unfortunately comes up when you Google thyroid conversion. So if your doctor, and this is in the textbooks and, and things like this too. So if your doctor, if you finally convince them to, to switch you, this is what they're probably going to be using. All right. And so you can see here, as I mentioned before, that one grain, they put the equivalent to 100 micrograms of T4. But you can see here the amount of T4 and T3 in one grain is only 38 micrograms of T4 and 9 micrograms of T3. So they're, they're basically saying this 38 plus, plus 9 is the equivalent to 100. And, you know, I, I disagree with that, um, which is why I created that chart above. So feel free to use this information. I hope it helps you guys. Um, I try to make these things so they're, they're very helpful so that you know, even though I can't treat every single one of you, hopefully what I can do is provide you with the information so that you can, you know, help yourself or if even share this information with other people or, or doctors so that they can um, help you a little bit better. Um, so I wanted to also show you where this, this information came from. I have a lot of good information on this blog post. It's actually, what is this one about? The, oh, it's a level thyroxine dosage guide. So I talk about the right dose of level thyroxine for patients, um, what to look out for when you're on this medication and some other things. So feel free to, to go through this if you'd like. Um, I've got some other videos on this, a um, couple of other uh, uh, images here, but I'm gonna go over that in a different video, so don't focus on that one too much. But anyways, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Leave any questions or comments below. Feel free to subscribe. Um, if you're listening to this, to this on the podcast, um, you know, leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Okay, thanks and I'll talk to you guys soon.